What is up, Bruins fans? Today, we bring you a clip from episode 358 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast, where hosts Sam Smith and Dom Tiano discuss the most recent signing of Brandon Bussey and what the Linus Allmark deal does with implications of it. Because the first, it, they both happened relatively around the same time. The second topic of discussion is Brandon Bussey. Now, Brandon Bussey, he was a RFA, and on Monday, they also signed Bussey to the same contract Ian Mitchell received. Uh, it was a one-year, two-way contract at league minimum, seven seventy-five, um, And we were all convinced that he would be the eventual backup to Swayman um, once the season began. We'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but what are your thoughts on Brandon Bussey coming back and what the contract will mean for Bussey? Well, first of all, everybody's got to know that Bussey or, or uh, Mitchell, even Michael DiPietro, when he signed his deal, what, a couple months ago now, uh, that they all signed for underneath, below their qualifying offer. Um, yep. Their qualifying offers were over 800,000. So but th that's normal. Um, I never thought that Bussy would be guaranteed or, or get the biggest look as the backup goaltender. I, I think that they're looking and, you know, I've often said that they're probably going to bring in a, a veteran. I didn't think it would be Corpus Allo, um, but I believe that they would look for a veteran that would push Di Pietro and Bussy. So and now we're going to have three guys battling it out for a backup role uh, uh, behind Jeremy Swayman. And, you know, um, competition is good. They've got a great goaltending coach. Um they got a great developmental coach in Mike Dunham. Uh, we've seen what he's done with Bussy and with Di Pietro, especially reviving Di Pietro's career. So I, I think it's going to be a, a big battle in training camp. I wouldn't say that Bussy's a lock. I wouldn't say any of them is a lock. Uh, but we're going to have to see how they do in, in training camp. Yeah, so Bussy had had i'd say an impressive preseason last year um making notably that phenomenal save in the first preseason game on against the rangers on johnny mm -hmm. Radzinski. um that save i still to this day thought that was the best save of the preseason for the bruins last year um so here are some of his numbers those who aren't up to speed on him he played in 41 games with providence last year recording a 23 10 and 5 record that's pretty good with a 2.67 goals against average and a 9.13 save percentage, um, he has an overall record of 48-17 and nine with Providence. Uh, he was originally signed as a free agent in 2022, so he's been with the club for a couple of years now. Um, when, where do you think his ceiling is for when he could when he could be the eventual backup or a starter if in the NHL with this with this club? I, I think he ha he has the ability to be a backup this season. It's just I Mark often talks about how hard he works during the off season to Im improve himself and to be the best that he can be. So he's going to have to do that this summer and go into training camp and uh, and win himself the spot. I, I think he's more than capable of it. Uh, but I also believe that Michael DiPietro is capable of it. Um, so um, yeah, to answer your question, Sam, I, he, I, I think he's ready to be a backup now. Uh, I don't think he'll ever be a true starter in the true sense of the word. Like, like he's capable of being a 40 game guy you know so a, a 1b uh if he reaches his potential but i don't think he'll ever be an, a true number one that you know gives you 55 to 62 games a season yeah i think bussy uh I, I definitely believe that it will be a dogfight for that backup role in in training camp 
with mm-hmm. between him, Di Pietro, and Corpus Salo. Um, Corpus Salo has a lot to prove in himself, right? As yep. last year, he was statistically the worst goaltender in the National Hockey League. Mm-hmm. Um, but that also may be because of who his defensive core was in front of him for all those games with Ottawa and how they're, they have been struggling for years um, trying to in their rebuild. And <clears throat> so maybe that might be why. Maybe it could be a bounce back year for Corpus Allo next year if, they, if he gets the backup role to Swayman. I think regardless of who gets the backup role, they'll get 30 games tops. It'll be Swayman's team next year. Yeah, definitely. Definitely. So, that's what I think. Corpus Allo, I think he could be a serviceable backup. And same with Bustier Di Pietro. All three of them, I'm not concerned if they get the backup role. I'll be completely fine with either three of them. Yeah, the, the only thing I worry about Di Pietro is size. Yeah, uh, but no, no, yeah, but knowing his competitive level, um, <clears throat> all the way back to his <laughs> first day in the Ontario Hockey League, uh, it's been noticeable how hard he competes. So um, I give him that. Uh, he won't let the size thing affect him. But, you know, we're talking the NHL. We're not talking the the AHL now. Mm-hmm. So, Yeah, so yeah, I think it will be down to Corpus Allo or Bussy. Just, be, just because of the size and not that DiPietro being small is a bad thing. I just think it sometimes it might not work out in an NHL setting. Yeah, not everybody can be UC Soros, right? Exactly, yeah. So, who I guess his price has picked up, I guess, a little bit too. I, yeah. We were talking last week that maybe uh, he was close to an extension in Nashville. Now I'm hearing rumors that he could there there could be a trade in the works for Soros. I have no idea. So, we'll have to see what happens with that in Nashville. I don't know. but Well, Trotz would like to get him extended. We know that, that much. So, and that they would be smart to do that because yeah. of Saros is he is phenomenal. Like what you saw? Be sure to come back on Wednesday for episode 359 of the Black and Gold Hockey Podcast as hosts Sam Smith, Dom Tiano, and Mark Allred will recap Bruins free agency and the 2024 NHL draft. See you then.